Hello everyone, my name is Feed Alligators and welcome to another video and today we will be talking about the three main FPS games that have been released this year and why I think Halo Infinite is on top out of all of them and just in general why this year for video games was very disappointing. But before we get into that make sure to subscribe to the channel to see more Call of Duty content, Battlefield content, Halo content, and really just any content. I've been kind of mixing it up a little bit recently and so I want to branch out more and obviously that's been pretty evident with my Horizon 5 clips but you know just make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Now it's no doubt that Halo Infinite has had some what mixed I don't want to say reviews but I think it's very very good the core gameplay is very very polished and everything like that. I just think it's very underwhelming so far because there's really nothing else but quick play and quick play big team battle unless you count the campaign. But I'm counting strictly multiplayer and it's kind of underwhelming because I thought when the campaign released they were going to do a bunch of things but nothing really changed for the multiplayer. So when they can iron out those mistakes of just adding more game modes adding more maps and letting you choose the game modes you want to play, then the game will be really, really, really good. It still is good, but it's not perfect yet. And really, I think the same can't be said for Battlefield 2042 and COD Vanguard because both of those games were massive disappointments. And really, COD Vanguard felt super unnecessary. Battlefield 2042 was supposed to launch and be super super good like all the trailers got people super hyped they added a ton of fan favorite things back I mean they even used a fan favorite Battlefield 4 clip for the trailer to show how the game was going to be like Battlefield 4 and a return to what that game was like I guess it's kind of the same because Battlefield 4's launch was terrible as well and this game launched absolutely horribly as well but the main reason for me that Halo Infinite sticks out the most is because of how polished it is. Like Vanguard, I guess you could say it's kind of polished, but it's really the same thing as every other game, which, I mean, I guess COD kind of has the formula down, but really, when you take away that, it's not polished at all. I mean, the weapon balancing is horrendously bad, and there's nothing new. The maps are pretty standard. And the quote-unquote innovation really doesn't add anything. Uh, Battlefield 2042, like I already said, terrible launch. Still has a ton of bugs. And the core gameplay of it is not polished. I do not like the fact that they took away classes. That is really, really dumb because that is a core part of what made Battlefield really cool. And I will admit, Battlefield 5, I didn't like the fact that the medic class had submachine guns. I liked the Battlefield 1 style, where the medic had rifles, because rifles typically didn't rush as much, which means they could stay back and help people up. While medic for Battlefield 5, for me at least, what I noticed is people basically ran around, didn't revive anyone, and would just use the unlimited med packs when they would just run and gun the enemy team. So, even though Battlefield 5's wasn't super, super polished, it still was something. And really looking back on Battlefield 5 as opposed to Battlefield 2042, like, people hated Battlefield 5 and swore that they would never touch the game. And now, Battlefield 5, at least from what I've seen, at, is at some points overtaking Battlefield 2042 in player count. Which I think is ironic that a bad game is now being like, kind of put up on a grandstand up against Battlefield 2042 because that is an even worse game. And I also did not play Halo 5 or Halo 4, so maybe the things were present in that game, but everything just feels like a breath of fresh air in Halo Infinite. I mean, I like not picking classes because it makes, it, it makes every match more interesting, and I don't feel like I have to choose one gun and grind it like I did in Call of Duty Cold War because you would basically pick one gun, play a bunch of matches to get better attachments and then really strictly only use that gun or just switch guns and do the exact same thing. There really was no room to not use the meta guns like the MP5 and stuff like that. And I do get that the progression system in Halo Infinite is really bad 
but they can easily fix that with just patches and stuff like that, while core gameplay elements of both of the other games really cannot be fixed with quick updates. And as much as it disappointed people when it happened when Halo Infinite was delayed, I think it was a really, really smart move, because had it released when it was originally supposed to, it definitely would not be the game that it is yet, especially because there's definitely a lack of content in Halo Infinite, but had they released it at the time it was supposed to, there would be a super, super big lack of content, where there really would probably only be like two maps in one big team battle match. And it really shows that it was worth it to wait and I can't wait to see what they do with Halo Infinite. I think it'll be a great game once they kind of polish out things with the matchmaking, like choosing the game modes. And I think Forge will be super fun. I haven't played Forge in a long, long time since I really didn't buy any of the newer Halos. And that is really, really cool to me. But with that, we will conclude the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment what you thought of this video down below and future video ideas. And as always, I will see you all next time.